Dear friends, how are you? Now we have come to Cataract. Cataract, I have split it into 12 modules so that you'll have uh, a slow evolution through the various phases of Cataract till you become thorough with this topic because we all understand that it's the most important topic from the um, exam point of view also. Cataract per se means any opacity of the lens, either the substance of the lens or the capsule of the lens. So that is the definition of Cataract. And cataract literally means a waterfall. Cataract literally, literally means a waterfall. It's as if seeing through a waterfall. That is why it's called cataract. The important points about understanding cataract is first the structure of the cataract, the structure of the human lens. The lens has an anterior capsule, which is more flatter, and a posterior capsule, an anterior capsule, which is flatter, anterior capsule, which is flatter, and a posterior capsule which is more steeper more steeper the posterior capsule which is thinner and it has cortex epinucleus and nucleus these are the three known structures uh, we can divide but this is like an onion peel appearance as you peel the onion peels more peel more layers will expose itself like that the lens is like a uh, onion peel appearance it is like worlds of layers around each other around each other so whatever is oldest whatever is oldest and more compact is called the nucleus and whatever is young and less uh, compact is called the cortex and there are layers in between like the uh, epinucleus like that another point i want you to understand is that the lens is basically formed from the surface ectoderm. The surface ectoderm forms the lens and the lens detaches and goes and stays inside the developing optic vesicle. It develops being optic vesicle, it goes and stays inside. So basically, though all the structures in the anterior chamber, anterior chamber or the anterior segment is formed from the um, neuroendocrine, neuroendocrinal structures, neuroendocrinal stru structures, the lens alone is formed from the surface ectoderm. And this lens, that is why it is called a privileged protein or a sequestrated protein, because it is basically from somewhere else and it has come and stayed here. And the vasculature of the lens is uh, absent. So the immune system of the human body never recognizes the lens as its own protein. That is why one fine day, if the protein is going to be leaking into the anterior chamber, the body will consider it to be a foreign protein and start mounting a reaction against that protein. This is the answer for uh, considering lens as a sequestrated protein or a privileged protein. The dimensions of the lens, like diameter, refractive index, uh, we when we considered refractive index of cornea, we said 1.376, remember? Now the lens dimension is 1.39, refractive index is 1.39. But the nucleus, if you think, say, separately take nucleus, if you take the nucleus separately, then it is roughly around 1.4. The, the um, refractive index of the nucleus is 1.4. So that, that you have to grind into mind. The 1.376 of cornea, 1.39 of the lens in total, and 1.4 of the nucleus separate is uh, very important points. Another interesting feature about the lens is the support of the lens the support of the lens here you see the zonules can you see the zonules the the you you have the anterior zonular limb the middle zonular limb and the posterior zonular limb all are attached to the ciliary body and they even have a zonular plexus and a zonular fork like arrangement a zonular plexus and a zonular fork like arrangement this attachment is very necessary for the lens to stay in its proper place if this attachment is disrupted, then the lens will either subluxate or dislocate. They'll ask you, what is the difference between subluxation and dislocation? If there is any attachment here, any, any remaining attachment, and the lens is seen in the patellar fossa, this is the patellar fossa where the lens resides. So in the patellar fossa, if it is seen, then it is subluxation. If it is to, no, no attachment whatsoever, totally it is detached and there is no presence in the patellar fossa, then it is called uh, dislocation. So these are the two important factors which they'll ask you, subluxation and dislocation. 
And another important thing I want to tell you about is that these zonules are the tertiary vitreous. These zonules are the tertiary vitreous. The tertiary vitreous holds and supports the lens, holds and supports the lens. The lens fibers as they are arranged in the cortex, epinucleus and nucleus have, have, a, have a peculiar pattern which creates Y-shaped sutures. There are Y-shaped sutures which are formed in the lens. Can you see the Y-shaped sutures? The Y-shaped sutures formed. These Y-shaped sutures can become cataractus and that is a variety called sutural cataract which we will discuss when we discuss about congenital cataracts. But here you remember that this is the basis, anatomical basis of that sutural cataract. More in detail about the lens again, we touched it upon in the first slide, but I want you to be thorough here. We said the anterior capsule is, uh, anterior capsule is present and the anterior capsule is special that it has a layer of epithelium and this is the lens epithelium which is constantly elaborating fibers. These lens fibers like an onion peel settle down into the lens. The more compact and the more older ones become the nucleus and come to the center of the uh, lens. The fresher fibers and the newer fibers become the cortex and they form the outer layers of the lens. And the equatorial, equatorial um, uh, region of the epithelium, the equatorial capsular region of the epithelium has lot of uh, migration also, has lot of lens migration, lens migration. In fact, this equatorial region is also an important region associated with lens fiber formation, lens fiber formation. Posterior capsule is very unique. Posterior capsule is almost uh, uh, null and it doesn't have any epithelium. It doesn't have any epithelium. It is very thin, very thin, very, very thin structure. And it is separating the vitreous cavity from the anterior segment of the eye. It is separating the vitreous cavity from the anterior segment of the eye. The question they'll ask you with the posterior capsule are two. One, posterior capsule is the most important structure which we try to preserve in the cataract surgery for placing the intraocular lens over it. If you, if you have done a cataract surgery and if you want to place an intraocular lens over this, uh, over this uh, posterior capsule, this is the hammock of support which the posterior capsule gives and this is where you keep the intraocular lens. That is point number one. And point number two, in the geometry of the eye, the point just in front of the posterior capsule, just in front of the posterior capsule is called the nodal point. This is the nodal point because any opacity in this nodal point will cause severe obstruction of vision, severe obstruction of vision. For example, patient can develop in steroids, especially in steroid intake, a posterior subcapsular cataract, and they'll ask you whether the patient's vision will be very compromised. Yes, the patient's vision will be severely compromised in a posterior subcapsular cataract. And the reason for that is because it is very close to the nodal point, and in the pupillary axis, in the pupillary axis, closer to the nodal point of opacity is there, it will cause severe obscuration of vision. And that is an important point you'll have to remember in that perspective. Next interesting is, as we discussed corneal transparency, there are factors which keep the lens transparent. And the major factor is, of course, the avascularity, tightly packed fibers, tightly packed fibers, the semi-permeable nature. In fact, the lens never allows too much of moisture to stay inside. The moment the lens allows more moisture to stay inside, then it becomes hydrated and becomes more cataractogenic. Okay. And there is um, auto oxidation and high concentration of reduced glutathione. So reduced glutathione is very important. Reduced glutathione is very important. In fact, that is the only material, only material which is synthesized, only material which is synthesized, synthesized in the, in the lens, the glutathione. The reduced glutathione is very important to preserve the um, transparency of the lens. Moreover, in the biochemistry of the lens, you will understand that most of the, most of the uh, anaerobic metabolism that takes place here creates lot of lactate, lactate, creates lot of lactate. And there is a sodium potassium ATPS pump, which is constantly pushing in potassium and pushing out sodium, pushing out sodium. This kind of, uh, this kind of constant uh, transfer is happening. So this is the introduction into cataract. We will slowly go into the more detailed aspects of cataract and subsequent PPTs.